How's it going everyone? This is Dr. Heffan. and welcome to another Crusader Kings 3 tutorial video. In this one we're going to be looking at the Land of Rus achievement and as part of that the tribal government. So for the Land of Rus achievement you're going to want to start as Rurik Rurikid and yeah put it on Iron Man of course and start the game. And we're just going to overwrite this one which I've already been kind of using for tutorial versions. So basically your goal as Rurik is to lead the Rurikid dynasty, so one of your heirs, to being the emperor of Russia. So that means controlling enough land in here to form the empire of Russia. Uh, you can see there's several kingdoms in here, in fact six different kingdoms. So. Getting the two kingdoms is not going to be a problem. It's actually just going to be getting enough counties to form the empire. If you go here, you see that you need 71 counties in order to form the empire of Russia. And you start off with 10, so you actually have a very, very strong start. So when it says easy, I think that um, this is a very easy start. And in terms of achievements, probably one of the more easier ones to get. So what you're going to see is that you start off with five out of four holdings. What I like to do is because we only have one son, we can give as many holdings to him as we want. So we don't have to worry about the confederate partition, meaning that we can't give it to our primary heir. So I'll just grant him this holding here. It takes us from five out of four down to four out of four. Another thing to remember as a tribal leader is that you can create men at arms regiments with your prestige so you can just start grabbing some skirmishers which I think is a great idea and then grab some bowmen as well to counter the skirmishers that your neighbors are going to create um, if you check out bowmen you can see that it counters skirmishers so it gives you a bonus uh, so your leader is your Rurik the troublemaker and he is a strong military leader. In fact, he's probably going to be the guy who's leading your armies into battle. So what you're going to want to do is grab a martial lifestyle. I like to grab the strategy focus. And then once you get more perks, you know, unlock the strategist. Sappers is really useful next perk in order to have your armies siege the enemy lands more quickly. It gives you more siege progress based off of your men at arms. So, you know, grabbing those initial bowmen and skirmishers is going to be beneficial not only in winning battles but also in sieges uh, and then i like to go down the gallant tree um, reduces the risk of commanding armies this shouldn't be a problem for you if you fight uh, just weaker enemies and weaker armies you shouldn't worry about losing battles and possibly having your leader die in battle uh, and then you can go into medicine focus once you're towards the end of your life gain a boost to your health in order to keep your leader around longer like we want long-lived leaders you know we're starting off without any of those legacies so you're not going to gain any benefit bonuses from like octogenarians or anything starting out so you have to do pretty much all the little things to keep your leaders alive longer now what you can see if we go to the religion and culture map mode is that we're not of the religion and culture that is around here. In fact, we are an Asatru Norse. So around here we can see that the culture is Russian or Vespian. Uh, and the religion is Sloviansken or Swomenesko. So Swomenusko. Not quite sure on the proper pronunciation of that. So what you could do is you could convert to the local culture. You could also spend your piety to change religions. That's not the religion tab. You could change religions here to um, the Slovianska or the Sumanosko. Uh, yeah, it only costs 250, so you have enough right away to change over. And that may actually make doing this achievement easier. Like right now, we're all on. Um, I believe our vassals, yeah, they're all of the different religions, uh, different cultures. That's going to cause them to have a negative idea towards us. Foreign culture group, Satro is hostile. So that would make it harder. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> like to make 
and more challenging on myself, so I wanted to continue to play through as an Asatru Norse. But I would say if you're just going for speed and ease, you know, converting to the local culture and converting your religion would definitely make it easier. Um, so in terms of expanding, the way I like to expand is, you can see, like, we want to go this way towards Bjarmaland Kingdom. Uh, this, this land, as you can see, is just bordered mostly by you know, nothing. There's nothing out here. Impassable terrain. So taking this land kind of is a nice area to put your back against. You're not going to be attacked so much from the uh, Kazaria or other steppe tribes out here. Um, you're also kind of safe from these uh, Finnish tribes up here. So in terms of attacking people, like first person to attack is just right here. It's part of your de jure Novgorod kingdom. He's got no allies. You have, um, you can form an alliance with Upland, I believe. Or does it say? Is it she not? Yeah. So your wife is is the daughter of the Jarl of Upland. So you could form an alliance there. Um, you can also marry your son off to someone to get another alliance. I'd say Minsk, since uh, in my playthrough, I'm trying to expand out this way first. Uh, they're pretty strong in their own right, so they're not going to be attacked so much by other people. In fact, they're going to do a lot of expanding themselves. So you want allies who are strong enough that they're not going to really want to call you into their wars. So you're not, you know, split between your own conquests and being called into other wars. And now, at 1.1, it does cost you fame in order to deny a call to arms. So... <laughs> There's no more just getting alliances and then saying screw you and only getting like minus 10 opinion. That was such, it was so wonderful, but obviously definitely not balanced. Um, yeah, so talking about war. So you can declare a war as a tribal government. You can use this conquer county causes belli. So we can just use this, it only costs 38 prestige. It's so cheap. You also have the subjugate causes belli. As you can see, it's a lot more expensive. And what you do is you get this person as your vassal. Whereas when you use the conquer, you take it for yourself. So conquering, I think, is more beneficial in that you can take that land for yourself and then give it to someone who is of your culture and of your faith. They're going to have a higher opinion of you, which means that you're going to get... Um, it's more likely that they won't join factions and also in terms of you know once you eventually create a kingdom which we'll talk about next they're more likely to vote for your heirs because they see them as the same culture and same faith now prestige is very important for tribal governments the amount of levies and gold you get from your vassals is based on your level of fame so you're going to want to keep increasing this level of fame uh, currently, we have pretty low prestige, but as we expand um, and get kingdom level, uh, again, which we're going to get to, we can get more prestige per month. Uh, and once you get to level 3, Illustrious, you can use the Conquer Duchy. Now, it does cost more prestige, but it would allow us to take a lot more land. Say we declared war against this guy, Conquer Duchy, we can take all of his land, versus Conquer County, we can only take one-third. So you're going to want to get your prestige up which means using your money for hosting feasts, calling hunts. I haven't seen a need to go on a pilgrimage yet, but again, that may be useful if you are thinking of converting. Um, yeah, I believe that was all I really wanted to say about that. I mean, just showing you that the contribution, this will stick, will say from liege level of fame, you get 10. Um, not Rifle Liege, okay, whatever that is. But yeah, another thing is that right when you start, you can create the title, the Kingdom of Novgorod. And you have enough gold for it, and it gives you 400 prestige. So that's a pretty good thing to do right off the bat. And now once you have more kids, and you kind of are splitting up your uh, Jarldoms due to the Confederate partition, you don't really have to worry about it uh, going out of your domain because they will just be Jarls and you'll still be have a king title. Uh, so another thing is that as you're expanding, you're going to be taking these Jarldoms. One thing you can do if you have multiple kids is give them their own Jarldom. That'll keep them from taking the counties within your capital Jarl, so within your capital duchy. 
So then you can keep all these counties for your heir. And yeah, let's just load the game where I have been playing as the Jarl, Rurik. Uh, here we can see. So already the first Rurik has died, so I'm playing as his son. And you can see that we've expanded quite a lot. So currently, if we want to form the Empire, we have 19, so we have nine more. One of the things, you can see we have an ally here. My half-brother inherited Bjarma land. And that is quite strange, because what you can do is once you have a uh, kingdom, is you can institute the Scandinavian law, uh, Scandinavian election law, which if you go into the realm, you can go to succession, and you can see elections. You can view the election, see is this the one that you want to have? Uh, thankfully, here we can see we both have <laughs> the same candidate in line. Oh no, he's rank two, so that's a problem. See, this is one thing I wish that they would change. It says rank here, but I would just like to see, you know, who is leading. It just shows my candidate, and it says not next in line for succession, but why, why not just show me the candidate? Who's leading? I see it here, you know, two, one but it's not even actually that guy who's leading. This is just some number, I guess, based on relevance because he's my son. But you can see here in electors, I believe this kid is leading. He's got 10 votes here. Um, you can see the breakdown of how people are voting. <laughs> Negatives for just being a baby. An encroaching foreign ruler. I mean, I don't, I don't know why these people are so upset. Everybody's always upset all the time just because we have two kingdoms. I mean, come on. Another thing that's kind of annoying is that your vote strength is based off of the capital popular opinion. So this kid has plus nine capital popular opinion. And the reason why he has so much of that is because if we go here, he's getting so many bonuses because he had low county control. So when you put your marshal in there, you have chances to, you know, gain uh, events that give popular opinion in the county capital. So this kid, like a little, how old is this guy? Two-year-old kid, just because he has a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people happy that he's, you know, doing increased control in his county, he's getting plus 49 opinion. He gets 10 votes. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. You know, I got plus 18 popular opinion, but I only get three votes? That, I mean, I think that should change. That That's really annoying. I feel like in CK2, it was based on their level, like how many counties they controlled, whether they were a duke or not. Um, just giving it based off of the capital popular opinion seems, seems ridiculous. Is this just something about Scandinavian elective? I don't think so. Yeah, it does say. Electors total domain development and capital popular opinion, but... I don't know. That that just seems crazy that this little kid gets 10 votes and I only get 3. But anyway, what we could do is we could go to war with our brother. We do get a claim on him during uh, elective succession type. So we can go to war with him. The unfortunate thing is we have pretty low prestige right now. But we're going to gain it. We have a good monthly income so we can also host feasts and go on hunts. In terms of buildings you're going to want to put in your capital domain, the Grand Halls is really great. At level 1, it gets you plus 0.2 prestige per month, and at level 2, plus 0.5. That's, that's a pretty significant amount, maybe almost one-tenth of the amount of prestige that we're gaining. Another thing about prestige is it does depend on how many, um, if we can see here, like family members as well as kings and dukes and counts. So, Having a large family, making sure to give out all these new lands that you conquer from your neighbors to your grandsons and sons and, you know, nephews is a good idea just to help boost that amount of prestige that you're going to gain. And I can't stress enough, prestige is like the most important thing as a tribal ruler. So, I believe that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this introduction to uh, tribal rulers as well as how to go about the Land of Rus achievement. 
I think from here we're going to start conquering down south. We still have to get quite a bit of land down here. So we're going to conquer down here, try and get to where these smaller, you know, one province miners, maybe two province rulers are. So we're going to have to go through some bigger guys to get there, but it should be fine, especially once we get enough prestige to use that conquer duchy causes belli. Then once we get a bit more land, we can then take back this kingdom for ourselves from our half-brother. All right, so join me next time when hopefully we're going to be at the point once we've conquered all of these lands, and I'll give you my thoughts on how we went from controlling two kingdoms, having our brother control one as well, he's, he's just holding on to it for us, to getting enough land to form the Empire of Russia. Until next time, do remember, as always, to take care of yourself.